Story number one. In the quiet town of Millfield, nestled in the rolling hills of rural America, there resided a man named John. Married to a local woman, Emily, their relationship was far from idyllic. John harbored a deep disdain for Emily, a sentiment that tragically extended to their young son, Tommy. Despite Emily's hope that Tommy's birth would soften John's heart, it only seemed to deepen the chasm between them. John, a towering figure with a brooding presence, was known for his quick temper and cruel words. Emily, in contrast, was a gentle soul, devoted to her son and the small joys of their modest life. One stormy evening, as thunder rumbled and lightning illuminated the darkened skies, John's voice thundered through their small home. Emily, are you ignoring me? Get out here! Emily's voice, trembling but firm, responded from Tommy's bedroom, John, please. Tommy's fever is worse tonight. I can't leave him. I need money from the safe, John demanded, his voice rising above the storm's fury. Emily protested, fearing for their son's medical needs, that money is for Tommy's treatment. I won't let you have it. Fueled by rage and alcohol, John roared back, you dare defy me? I'll get it myself. In a horrific turn of events, John's anger became physical. The once peaceful home turned into a scene of chaos and fear. Tommy, witnessing the violence, cried out in terror. That night marked a turning point. As John's rage spiraled out of control, a series of eerie occurrences began to unfold in Millfield. The town, known for its historical lore and legends of the supernatural, found itself engulfed in a series of unexplainable incidents. First, townspeople reported seeing strange, shadowy figures near the edges of the woods at night. Pets began to disappear and whispers of a haunting presence spread like wildfire. At the heart of these disturbances was the increasingly unstable John, who seemed to be unraveling at the seams. Emily, desperate to protect Tommy and herself, began to sense an ominous force at work. As Halloween approached, the disturbances reached their peak. On a night of full moon, Emily awoke to find John speaking in tongues, his eyes vacant and his voice unrecognizable, the house shook as if in the grip of an unseen force, and Tommy, pale and frightened, clung to his mother. In a climactic confrontation, Emily, armed with an ancient amulet rumored to ward off evil, faced John. The air crackled with supernatural energy as John, now seemingly possessed by an otherworldly entity, advanced towards them. The story reaches its zenith in a terrifying showdown between the forces of darkness that have consumed John and the resilient spirit of Emily, fighting to save her son and herself from an unimaginable fate. In the end, the town of Millfield is left to grapple with the aftermath of these events, the truth of which blurs the line between reality and the supernatural. The tale of John, Emily, and Tommy becomes a chilling legend, a haunting reminder of the thin veil between our world and the unknown. Story number two. My name is Ethan, and I'm about to share with you a chilling tale from my past, a story that still haunts the corners of my mind. This incident occurred roughly six years ago when I was residing in a small town in Oregon, nestled amidst dense forests and steeped in local lore. At that time, eerie rumors began circulating in our community about a spectral figure haunting the town, a witch, they said, who roamed the streets at night. This mysterious figure was said to be a terrifying woman, appearing on rooftops and vanishing into dark alleys. Fear gripped the town, once friendly streets grew desolate as night fell. People stopped their usual evening gatherings and huddled inside, locking doors and whispering about the witch. Our neighborhood, once a close-knit community, transformed into a place of suspicion and dread. One night, fueled by fear and curiosity, a group of locals banded together, keeping vigil to catch a glimpse of the supposed witch. The night wore on, but they saw nothing, only the rustling leaves and the distant howl of the wind. I, for one, was a skeptic. 
Whenever someone mentioned the witch, I'd scoff and dismiss their stories as figments of overactive imaginations or someone's idea of a sick joke. That was until the night everything changed. It was a night like any other, except for an unnerving chill that seemed to pervade the air. I lay in bed, trying to shake off an inexplicable feeling of dread, when a faint noise from outside caught my attention. It sounded like someone, or something, was whispering my name. Curiosity overcoming fear, I cautiously approached my window. What I saw next would forever alter my perception of reality. There, in the dim moonlight, stood the figure of a woman on my neighbor's rooftop. Her eyes were like hollows, her skin pale and ethereal. She seemed to be looking right at me, and in a blink, she vanished. Panicked and unsure of what to do, I decided to investigate. Armed with nothing but a flashlight, I ventured into the night. The streets were eerily silent, and a thick fog had settled in, obscuring my vision. As I walked, the whispering grew louder, surrounding me, as though the very air was alive with voices. Following the whispers, I found myself standing before the old Ashwood house at the end of the lane. The house had been abandoned for years, its history a tapestry of tragic tales and rumored hauntings. The front door was ajar, beckoning me inside. The interior of the house was decrepit, the air heavy with the scent of decay. As I moved through the rooms, my flashlight revealed disturbing sights, strange symbols etched into the walls, old photographs with faces scratched out, and a sense of overwhelming sadness. In the heart of the house, in what must have once been a living room, I encountered her, the witch. But she was not what I had expected. She was an apparition of sorrow, trapped in torment. Her story unfolded before my eyes, a tale of loss, betrayal, and a curse that bound her to these grounds. As the truth unraveled, the house seemed to come alive with spectral energy. The air crackled, and the witch's form became more agitated. I realized then that her presence was a manifestation of unresolved anguish, and that to free her, and the town, I had to help her find peace. The story reaches its climax in a dramatic confrontation with the spirits that haunted the house, a battle not of physical might, but of understanding and compassion. The resolution of the witch's tale brought an unexpected closure not only to her tormented existence but also to the dark history of the town. In the aftermath, the once feared streets of our town returned to normal. But the memory of that night, the Witch of Ashwood Lane, and the shadows that once lurked in our midst, remain a haunting reminder of the thin line between the known and the unknown, the seen and the unseen. Story Number 3 In a secluded corner of a rural town in Oregon, there stood an old office building, isolated and surrounded by an overgrown wilderness. The building, accessible only by a narrow, winding dirt road, seemed to exist in a world of its own, shrouded in an air of mystery and unease. This office, managed by a man named Edward King, was known for its peculiar location and the thick brush that engulfed it, creating a perpetual twilight within its walls even during the brightest days. Despite its unsettling atmosphere, the office was home to a small team of five dedicated employees, among whom was Michael the office handyman. Michael, with his cheerful demeanor and lively conversations, often broke the monotony of their eerie surroundings, infusing the office with a sense of normalcy. But beneath the surface of their daily routine, something darker lurked, a secret that the dense foliage and the quiet halls of the office seemed to guard zealously. It all began with subtle changes, misplaced files, flickering lights, a feeling of being watched. Initially dismissed as mere coincidences or tricks of the mind, these occurrences soon escalated into something more sinister. One autumn evening, as the sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows across the office, Edward stayed late to finish some paperwork. The building was quiet, save for the occasional rustle of leaves outside. That's when he first heard it, a faint whisper, almost inaudible, coming from the depths of the office. Curiosity mixed with apprehension, Edward followed the whispers, leading him to the old storage room at the back of the building. The door, usually locked and forgotten, stood slightly ajar. Inside, he discovered old, 
Dusty files detailing the history of the office and its original purpose, a purpose long forgotten and far more sinister than anyone could have imagined. The building, it turned out, was built on the grounds of an old estate, infamous for its dark history and unexplained disappearances. Legend spoke of a family consumed by greed and a pact with a malevolent force that granted them wealth and power at a terrible price. As Edward delved deeper into the history, strange occurrences in the office intensified. Employees reported seeing fleeting shadows, hearing whispers, and experiencing an overwhelming sense of dread. Michael, once the heart and soul of the office, grew increasingly anxious, claiming to feel the presence of someone or something unseen. The story reaches its climax on a stormy night, when the office's sinister past and its present collide in a terrifying revelation. Edward and his team, trapped inside by the raging storm, must confront the malevolent force that has awakened. In a desperate bid to survive the night and break the curse that haunts the office, they unravel the dark secrets buried within its walls. The night becomes a battle not just against the storm outside, but against the shadows that lurk in every corner of the forgotten office on Shadow Creek Road. In the aftermath, the office and its surrounding wilderness are forever changed. The once quiet and mundane building becomes a testament to the unseen horrors that can lurk beneath the surface of ordinary places, a haunting reminder that sometimes, the past refuses to stay buried. Story Number 4 In the picturesque town of Redwood, nestled amidst rolling hills and verdant forests, there lived a woman named Evelyn, renowned for her breathtaking beauty. Evelyn, who dreamt of a life filled with love and luxury, found her aspirations realized when she met Alexander, a wealthy and handsome man who was immediately captivated by her charm. Their whirlwind romance led to a lavish wedding, and soon after, Evelyn gave birth to twins, a boy and a girl. Alexander provided them a life of opulence in their sprawling estate, Redwood Manor, and for a time, their happiness seemed complete. However, as the years passed, Evelyn's radiant beauty began to fade with age. Alexander's affections cooled, his once ardent love giving way to indifference. He poured his attention and care into their children, while Evelyn became a mere shadow in her own home, her presence seemingly forgotten. Desperate to regain her husband's love, Evelyn sought the help of a mysterious local artist known for his supernatural abilities. She commissioned him to paint her portrait, one that would capture her youthful beauty forever. The artist, a reclusive figure with an unsettling aura, agreed, and thus began the creation of what would become known as the Portrait of Redwood Manor. Upon completion, the portrait was indeed a masterpiece, portraying Evelyn in an eternally youthful and enchanting light. However, the painting harbored a dark secret. As Evelyn's physical appearance continued to age, the portrait remained unchanged, and with each passing day, it seemed to draw life from its real-life counterpart. As months turned into years, strange occurrences began to plague Redwood Manor. Servants whispered of ghostly apparitions, unexplained noises filled the halls at night, and a sense of foreboding hung over the estate. Alexander, once oblivious to Evelyn's plight, started noticing her deteriorating health and the unsettling changes in the manor. He began to sense a sinister connection between Evelyn's worsening condition and the eerily ageless portrait. The story reaches its terrifying climax when Alexander discovers the horrifying truth behind the portrait's creation. The artist, driven by dark forces, had imbued the painting with a curse, one that trapped Evelyn's essence, slowly draining her life to maintain its timeless beauty. In a frantic effort to save his wife, Alexander confronts the malevolent spirit within the painting. The manor becomes a battleground between the living and the supernatural, with the family's fate hanging in the balance. The culmination of their struggle brings a shocking revelation and a devastating choice. To break the curse, the portrait must be destroyed, but doing so might mean losing Evelyn forever. In the aftermath, Redwood Manor, once a symbol of beauty and wealth, stands as a cautionary tale of vanity and the dangers of tampering with forces beyond human understanding. The story of Evelyn, Alexander, and the cursed portrait becomes a haunting legend in Redwood, 
a chilling reminder that some desires, when pursued without regard for consequence, can lead to unimaginable horrors. Story number five. In the quaint town of Hawthorne, nestled in the Pacific Northwest, stood the prestigious Hawthorne University. Known for its historic architecture and academic excellence, the university also harbored a darker side, woven with tales of the supernatural and unexplained. One of these tales began with a student named Sam, who resided in one of the university's oldest dormitories. Each night, as Sam settled into bed, he would hear eerie noises, whispers, faint screams, and the unsettling sound of nails scraping against his window. Fear gripped him, and sleep became a distant memory as he awaited the safety of dawn. The following morning, while conversing with his friend Alex, Sam learned of a chilling story that had haunted the campus for years. A former student named Aaron had taken his own life in the very room Sam now occupied. It was said that Aaron's restless spirit still wandered the halls of the dormitory. Intrigued and unnerved, Sam delved deeper into the university's past, uncovering more tales of the paranormal. One such story revolved around a student named Natalie from a nearby dorm. Natalie, much like Sam, was intrigued by the supernatural and often played a game known as Ghost Call, a ritual believed to summon spirits for entertainment. However, Natalie's fascination with the occult took a dark turn when the game apparently summoned actual apparitions, leading to tragic consequences. Panic and fear spread through the campus, and Natalie was eventually expelled, her life irrevocably altered by her foray into the unknown. Meanwhile, Sam, driven by a mix of fear and curiosity, continued to experience unsettling occurrences in his dorm room. Determined to find answers, he enlisted the help of his friends, Alex and Jason. Their quest for the truth led them to a nearby diner, a popular stop for university students. It was there that Jason, venturing out one evening, heard mysterious calls and felt an unseen presence. When they inquired about it, an elderly local shared a tragic tale of a car accident that had occurred years ago near the diner. In the accident, a woman had desperately pleaded for help but was left to die alone. Rumors claimed her spirit haunted the area, responsible for numerous unexplained incidents. As the trio dug deeper, they uncovered a web of secrets and unexplained events that seemed to connect the various stories, Sam's experiences in the dorm, Natalie's ill-fated game, and the haunted diner. Each tale was a piece of a larger, more sinister puzzle. The story reaches its climax on a stormy night when the trio decides to confront the spirits haunting the university. In a harrowing journey through the dimly lit halls of the dormitory and the shadowed paths near the diner, they come face to face with the restless spirits seeking closure. In a heart-stopping finale, Sam, Alex, and Jason uncover the truth behind the hauntings, a tapestry of loss, unresolved grief, and a university's dark history that has left a lasting imprint on the present. In the aftermath, Hawthorne University remains a respected institution, but the tales of the supernatural become an indelible part of its legacy. The story of Sam and his friends becomes a cautionary tale, a reminder that some mysteries are better left unexplored, and that the echoes of the past can sometimes reverberate into the present in the most unexpected and terrifying ways. <laughs>